Hey everybody, Joe Jaguar one more time. Uh, thank you for all the people that uh, liked, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'm starting to get a little traction now, so appreciate all you new subscribers. Uh, it's great. Uh, maybe as I get bigger, I'm actually going to ask uh, some of my subscribers if they actually want to join me in a video. So if you would like to do that, uh, maybe come to spring because I'm actually, as I said in one other video or a couple of them, I may be listing my condo, trying to get a townhouse so where I can actually have a backyard where I can actually do this hobby uh, much more better than a balcony. Uh, even though I got the south facing balcony, which is great because most of the best stuff uh, is on the south viewing the sun, moon, planets, all. Uh, you know, the ecliptic is on the south part, but uh, you still can't see anything. I've got 180 degrees north that, of course, I can't wear. Facing the building can't see, and to the sides as well, and of course, uh, upwards where I have the next balcony. Um, anyway, so maybe uh, come the spring, uh, I might uh, ask if anybody um, wants to come to the Toronto area, record a couple of videos with us together, and we can go over uh, maybe you can bring uh, one of your products, one of your scopes that you like, and we can talk a little bit about it type of thing. So I'm always open to that. Uh, let's just wait till after I move in so it's not too chaotic right now. Okay, today let's just talk about Bino Viewer. Is it good? Is it worth it? Should you do it? Okay, so this is my actual second unit. Uh, the first unit I had was called a Tut Hill for use people that's been in the hobby a long time you'll probably recognize that name uh, no longer around anymore the uh, person passed away several years ago but I have that unit and this one is the Antares version uh, vinyl viewer uh, wasn't exp uh, too expensive this guy here was about 199 bucks before tax so not expensive didn't come with any eyepieces came with the case I have no idea what I did with the case so um, anyway, um, so here's how you use it. So basically, you can put, uh, let me get the caps off, uh, you can put a couple of eye pieces in there. Of course, you need to have basically a pair of eye pieces, and they have to be, uh, it should be the same name, same focal length, uh, just so everything is exactly the same uh, eye piece. Um, so here I got a Omcon. Um, 26 millimeter colossal. So again, they should be a matching pair uh, type of thing. So you would put that in your scope. Now, for let's just stop there and talk about how easy it is it to use this on a scope. Now, if you have an SCT match suit tog or a compound type of scope, is the easiest kind. Because as you saw in one of my videos called the six inch versus SET versus the 6 inch reflector versus the 6 inch um, refractor. You'll see there that the SET or the Max Sutov, those type of scopes have so much focus, probably at least 30 to 40 turns before it is, uh, finishes. So the problem with most reflectors and refractors are they only have, you know, most of them between 2 and 4 inches worth of travel. So a lot of times you, for those kind, you might have to use a barrel underneath it, uh, this first, and then, uh, well, the bar, you know, you have your diagonal, then the barrel, then this guy, then your eyepieces. So if you're looking on an angle, as you guys know, most um, equatorial mounts, um, you might be on these weird angles, like I said in one of my other videos where um, how to polar align. Um, type of thing, an equatorial mount, you're always going to be in a weird angle. So if you're on a, a side with a barrel attached with the vinyl viewer and eye pieces, it can just slip right down off your diagonal. So um, reflectors and refractors are definitely harder than a compound or Schmidt uh, Cassegrain or Matsuta. But anyway, so that's um, how you would use it. Now, mind you, the vinyl viewer itself probably puts two or three hundred millimeters um, added to your focal length, um, and it depends on which model you have too. Some might be taller, some might be sh slightly shorter type of thing. So you got to take that into consideration. So for me, 
actually don't go uh, any lower than a pair of 26. Um, and then for my medium power, and, and again remember, if you are using a refractor or a reflector, and you have to put, you have to use the Barlow first, it's actually multiplying, uh, let's say the 26 millimeter, or really 13 millimeter, and then remember you're adding two, three hundred millimeters of focal length to that. So at 26 millimeter, if you're using that Barlow, it's not technically low power anymore. You're kind of at the ready medium power. So at 17, again, it would be like that. You would just look into it, uh, focus it, and there you go. Um, and then for my high power, I have 10. Again, if you're using um, a Barlow, or if you have to use a Barlow to come to focus, this is no longer a 10. It's already a 5 millimeter with that extra 2, 300. It'd be equivalent uh, to like a 4 millimeter eyepieces. So that's kind of high power as it is. Um, now, here's the problem I have with these vinyl viewers. Um, I mean, this is not high-powered view. Now, unlike a binocular, they each have a barrel, fairly easy. You just basically put, you know, tilt it to your eyes, and since each eye has a barrel, it's very easy to focus and come to one clean, uh, uh, you know, single image. Now, in a vinyl viewer, that light gets, you know, comes up the eye, you know, the diagonal, goes up, splits into two, and then goes into each eye. Now, some places uh, will say that it basically is making your scope, so if you have a six inch scope, it's reducing the effective aperture of your scope because the light beam that's coming in is splitting into two after. Uh, there's a debate on that. Um, some people say no it doesn't because once you merge, uh, the light beam merges into your eye, your eye uh, or your eyes kind of uh, bring back its effective uh, aperture. Yes, some people say yes, no, okay, it doesn't matter. Here's a problem I, I have now owning two different kinds, not just one, is because there is only one barrel uh, in and then it's splitting into two, I find it very hard because you've got to kind of focus your eyes towards infinity type of thing. And I don't know if that makes sense, but I find it very hard to always see one image. Um, and it doesn't matter focusing it uh, on the main scope, on, on these um, eyepieces. Uh,